Here is a simple procedure that will not justify entirely because it's trying to bypass a rather complicated theory of how to decompose the distribution of a random variable. The procedure, it is clear that if it works, the solution is correct. What is uh, complicated is to prove that it, is, it will always work when it's supposed to work, and that we will avoid talking about it. Um, and the procedure is the following. We are given um, a distribution function f, and we want to test if f is absolutely continuous. What does it mean to be absolutely continuous? It means if we define the measure mf on the sample space, the real line, with the, with the Borel sets, of course, then um, we want to know if this measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, which by the radon nicodine theorem, which was in the previous video lecture, being absolutely continuous is the, the same as having a density. So um, what we do, the procedure is the following. Take, take f to be the derivative or the almost everywhere derivative of this function f. Okay? And we get, well, we can compute the derivative. Maybe in some points it will be defined. Some other points it will not be defined. If it's defined, it's non-negative because f is uh, non-decreasing. And well, we get a function that is defined uh, maybe almost everywhere, maybe not quite, but um, su suppose we get a function f which is uh, defined almost everywhere, then, well, in fact, it cannot, but we're not going to prove that. It, will, it cannot be not defined on a set of positive measure. It will be defined almost everywhere. And what is not clear is if we, we, when we take the derivative and we integrate, do we lose something? And maybe, yes, uh, we will not lose anything if f is indeed absolutely continuous. But in any case, we, we can test. We can test it, we can do an ad, we can make an ad hoc test on the go when we get the function. We compute the derivative, integrate the derivative, and see if we get the same function. Okay, well, if our function is like this, when we compute the derivative, we get a function which is zero almost everywhere except for these points here where it is undefined. So you see that we can lose something. When we integrate the derivative, we not, only, we not necessarily get the original function. And just by making the function continuous here, we can make it continuous, but continuous in such a bad way that this still doesn't work. So it feels like maybe at first that this relation should always hold true because little f was taken as the derivative of capital F but this would be the fundamental theorem of calculus inverted. Okay? What the fundamental theorem of calculus says is if f is continuous and it, it is the derivative of some function, then um, we can make this claim here. But if f is... If, f is not continuous or it's not defined on every point of this interval or for every real number to be uh, to remain simple um, the fundamental theorem of calculus doesn't say that f being the derivative of a function almost everywhere there's no almost everywhere there anyway if, if when we integrate we get back the original function we can conclude by the previous remark the one that we made here in the first part of this video lecture we can conclude that f is indeed the density of the measure or of the measure mf. Let me write here mf with respect to the Lebesgue measure. And here's an interesting exercise to apply that concept. We know that u, uh, we are given that u, u has distribution uniform.
on 0, 1. Then we define the new random variable x to be a function of u. Let's take the exponential of this variable u. Um, find the density. Of x. So this is an exercise for you. Um, how would you do it? Well, you define f of x. You compute what f of x is. f of x, of course, it will be the probability that x is less than a certain, than a certain t. You will substitute x for e to the u, and then you will do the computations that has to be done to get what f x is. Once you get fx, maybe you can try to compute or you define f to be f prime, fx prime. And once you have that, then you can try to integrate from minus infinity to x this little function f. And if uh, this integral, when you do this integral, if it gives us back the original function, then no, yes, we found its density. And this is how you solve the exercise. I will hold the solution for now so that you give a big uh, go to this exercise. Uh, if not, I will, uh, the next video will, will show you a quick solution to it. But I strongly advise you do not move to the next video for the time being. Uh, try to solve this exercise yourselves.